untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Band Angels deck, which is a collected company life gain synergy deck, and according to the stats on untapped.gg, currently one of the top tier decks in the Explorer best of one metagame. The reason to splash blue is mainly for Glasspool Mimic, which we can play as a tap land or as a shapeshifter that will copy a creature that's already in play, so it can copy one of our key angels, like Righteous Valkyrie, which will gain life when an angel or cleric enters a battlefield equal to its toughness, and if we get to 27 or more life, we'll give our team a plus 2 plus 2 bonus, so great in multiples, also very important for enabling Resplendent Angel, which will make a 4-4 angel token end of turn if we gained 5 or more life. And then another great enabler for gaining life is Bishop of Wings, which will gain 4 life when an angel enters a battlefield under our control, and when an angel dies it's replaced by a 1-1 spirit token, which can help against more controlling strategies. We also have a Janna Font of Hope as a new addition from Streets of New Capenna, which kind of reinvigorated the archetype, which will let us put a ton of plus 1 counters on angels that enter the battlefield, which also makes it easier to enable our Resplendent Angel when we have a Righteous Valkyrie in play, as now our angels will be much larger when they enter the battlefield, potentially gaining 5 life right away, so we don't need to play anything else and we might not even need our Bishop of Wings. Then Youthful Valkyrie, another good 2-drop that will pick up plus 1 counters as we play more Angels. Speaker of the Heavens, if we have 27 or more life, can tap to make a 4-4 Angel token every turn. And then we've got Skyclave Apparition as the main interaction to take away opposing hate cards or maybe disrupt the opponent's combo, and can of course also find it with Collected Company, which is the most important card in the deck. And then our mana base includes a few shock lands, we've got the Innistrad dual lands, and all 8 pathways, couple basics in case of Field of Ruin, and one Eye Gancho. Could also be playing the new Tri land from Streets of New Capenna, which always comes into play tapped, but want to have a smooth mana base and avoid having too many clunky openers with a ton of tap lands, so we're just going for as many untapped lands as possible, even though it might cost us a little bit of life in the process. So that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand has potential, I'll try it. Opponent on a turn one Lunark Veteran, so probably a mirror match. Okay, so if we can cast back to back company, we have a uh, decent shot in the matchup. But our opponent is on the play. Line is great. Get our bishop out, and then between Resplendent Angel and Valkyrie. Kind of an interesting choice. Opponent may be more of a traditional life gain deck without angels, but more likely that they're just missing the angels at the moment. Let's go with uh, Righteous first. That way if we miss a land playing Resplendent next turn, we'll already create an angel token. And there's Skyclave getting rid of Righteous Valkyrie. That's too bad. Okay, do we want to play Jada plus Speaker? Don't really mind. And then right now Resplendent would come into play as a 4-4 Angel. So if we suicide attack with Speaker we can uh, enable it. There's Heliot. Okay. So that can start adding counters everywhere. But Skyclave probably wants to get rid of Heliots as soon as we get the chance. So we'll take four from Duxos. And uh, yeah, Skyclave can attack with Jada. There's a backup Heliot, sadly. And yeah, they have enough devotion so it enters as a creature, which will then trigger the veterans as well, so that's important. So things aren't going as well as they could, but we still have double company in hand, although I'm sure our opponent could be holding their own. So yeah, an untapped line here would do us a lot of good. Could also then play Valkyrie plus Resplendent Angel, which is pretty good in its own right. Opponent keeps on attacking for 10. 
Yeah, we'll take it. Alright, they had the lanes, we drew one as well. So now the question is, youthful plus resplendence? Or do we company? Youthful plus resplendence, pretty good since that guarantees that we keep on triggering resplendent in future turns. Although company has a potential of finding another apparition or a clone effect to get rid of Heliod, which is pretty important too. But if we kind of miss on company, then it's maybe game over. So I'll go with a safer approach. And then can attack first. Play Resplendence. Gain a ton of life. And now we can potentially block profitably. Linden, okay, that represents a lot of life gain as well here when their creatures attack. But we'll see if they make a big attack or not. I'm fine throwing Skyclave Apparition under the bus. Ooh, a Voice of the Blasts. Okay. So that's gonna probably gain Indestructible pretty soon. But our opponent's empty handed at least, so that's the good news. And we still have double company to work with. So this game could get pretty crazy. Opponent attacks with the larger creatures. Probably have to block with Apparition, although the drawback, if we do so, is if we find Glasspool Mimic with Company, we can no longer copy Apparition. So maybe we'll try and save it anyways. And... Yeah, we can just... Trade Angel for the opponent's Skyclave if we'd like. Or we can try and kill Daxos, although that's going to be pretty challenging without losing anything important. So I think we just take this trade, take 14, and then carry on with Collected Company next turn. Okay, I'll let us company. And we definitely found some goodies here. So we can Skyclave, we could also go double Resplendent Angel. Because it's unclear what to exile with Apparition. Is it Heliot? Is it Voice of the Blessed? Maybe Voice of the Blessed because it has flying, but we may be able to just go over the top here with double Resplendence. Gonna gain a ton of life, make a ton of angels, which will gain more life. And then we should be in business. Next turn I'll start activating Speaker of the Heavens. Or at 27. A Righteous Valkyrie would have been pretty good too here, not gonna lie. But now we're somewhat more stable. And I think the second company is gonna take the game away. Opponent can activate Heliot for life gain. Voice of the Blasts can become indestructible in a second, but can maybe chump it with our spirits. The illusion we also don't really care about. So keeping my life total high for Speaker of the Heavens is probably worth it. So we will chump the Flyer, chump Daxos. Or I guess we can just block with our larger creatures here and not lose them. So that also works. And then, uh, yeah, that should be fine. Opponent gives their creatures lifelink. One potential concern still is an Ajani exiling my board. So that's uh, a reason to try and apply as much pressure as possible still. But another good company, especially if we can find another Skyclave, will be 
exactly what we need. Alright, opponent concedes before seeing what Collected Company reveals. Yeah, we could have bricked for all they know. Also could have considered just activating one of my Resplendent Angels for 6 mana, so that we don't need to rely on Collected Company to be good, but I think the upside's high enough that we should still go for it here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Double speaker, and then mostly double company is what we're excited about. Up against Yorion, so it looks like Asper control. Get in for one. Get our speaker out alongside a tapped temple garden. And then hope that uh, company can win us this game. Nars, it's fine. Can attack Narsa to prevent another minus. And a uh, third company is a good draw here. You could use some training. Field of Ruin, we have one basic land left. And let us attack. Is going to go upstairs here. And then I could main phase company to try and gain some life to activate speaker, but against a control deck I would rather pass and play these companies end of turn. Yorion put in hands, so could see a counter spell here. Gonna be a Dovin's Veto. Now the question is, do we want to company main phase to make sure it resolves and then potentially run into a sweeper? I'm leaning end of turn again. Also because we can just activate speaker twice now. So we don't have to overextend. And then I guess we could play around like a sensor or Jory Disruption. There's a Devastating Mastery to wipe the board. That resolves. And then we can Company end of turn. Finding double Valkyrie. Okay, Glasspool Mimic can copy Valkyrie. What happens then? Our team gets uh, four, five additional power. So it wouldn't quite be lethal. So I think we keep up Collected Company instead. What if we cast Collected Company? There's a chance we could just win. But it's a little bit risky. So I think we just hit for eight. And then set up another company here. Shadow's Verdict will wipe the board. And that should do it. Valkyrie, Resplendent Angel. Although there is still a march to worry about here. But Resplendent Angel triggers, since we didn't cast Company end of turn to make sure we got the triggers here. And that'll do it, so yeah, close game against Esper, surviving a couple sweepers, thanks to Triple Company. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Looking to play turn two, kind of interesting. Against Mono Reds, I guess I'm liking Bishop. Double Bishop even, so we can Bishop into Bishop. And then Resplendent Angel make a token right away. That's going to be pretty difficult to overcome, unless there's an Amber Cleave in our future. Opponent passes, even picked up Company. Yeah, we'll just play Bishop here. And pass. Pass. 
Could attack for one, might need bishop to block a haste creature. Although, don't necessarily want to block and lose it, so maybe attacking for one was fine. It's going to be a rampaging for Osadon. That's a problem, but there's a solution. So opponent came prepared for the life gain matchup. Well, we can expect him to have more in hand, but uh, company could find Glassball Mimic, copy apparition. It's gonna be a Chandra, presumably killing a bishop. You and I are take him out. But then we kill Chandra on the way back at least. And I think we'll company over Resplendent, double youthful is also an option, which I don't really mind us, we'll gain 8 here while we can. Kill Chandra. And then we still have our collected company available for next turn. Yeah, I think playing four Skyclave Apparitions is pretty important nowadays in these Angel decks. Because before you could maybe get away with going all in for life gain synergies and the combo, if you will. But now that decks are adjusting, including cards like Rampaging for Osadon, maybe some hate cards for Collected Company in the form of Gravedigger's Cage, I think having that interaction is important. Okay, so Resplend versus Collected Company. Yeah, we'll company. And hits Jada and probably Glasspool Mimic. Copying a youthful Valkyrie. Get a ton of counters. And we're just on the beatdown plan here. Monoret kind of playing as a control deck here. Torbran, not gonna do it. And uh, this may be enough for lethal, or at least close to. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is keepable, if unexciting. But... Uh, yeah, we can play a turn to Jada. And then we're not too sad if it gets removed. I'll hang on to Glasspool Mimic. Up against what may be a Feather deck. A red white. And yep, a Legionnaire definitely points towards Feather. So hopefully they don't have the namesake card, although we do have Skyclave to maybe get rid of it. So kick things off with probably Jada. Highest upside if it survives, I think. Define Strike to pump. So I might have to play Skyclave anyway, just to get rid of the Legionnaire. All their opponent could have some protection spells in place. Less likely in red. Opponent is down to two cards now, that's good. Okay, can play this on blue. And then Skyclave, Exile, Legionnaire. Attack for two. We're still in trouble if our opponent has a bunch of cantrips like Defiant Strike to redraw, find more cheap spells to enable Magecraft and Prowess. And yeah, that's one of them. Another Defiant Strike, so this is not going according to plan. Another Lumomancer. Probably have to double block. And then take 9 if they have another spell word dead anyway. Okay, Bona kills Jada, we fall to 2 life. Alright, so... Is it time for Glasspool Mimic, Compi Apparition, Exile, Soul Scar? Although if they have any spell, we're still forced to double chump. So maybe... We shouldn't play around that and instead 
go for Jada and Valkyrie, put some creatures in play, and hope for some life gain off the top. Do I attack? Yeah, maybe I should. Just count on the opponent not having a spell. Another Lumamancer, that's fine. No attacks. Okay, I guess I'll have to Glass Bull Mimic here, and then we probably just copy Youthful Valkyrie at this point. If our plan involves the opponents not drawing any non-creature spells, we might as well fly over. And then we are presenting lethal for next turn. Spike Field Hazard will do it. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, it looks like. And sequencing. Kind of want to keep Mimic to maybe copy a Righteous Valkyrie. So we'll uh, not play it just yet. Okay, put it maybe on a Mono Black Aggro or Vampire's deck. Now I'm maybe more into playing this tapped since we picked up another powerful 3-drop. So we can just curve Righteous Valkyrie into another one, into Resplendent Angel. And yeah, it looks like Vampire Aggro. Thoughtseize is gonna probably take one of the Valkyries. Goes for Resplendent Angel instead, okay. Don't have any good attacks. Mono Black gonna have quite a bit of removal for Righteous Valkyrie, potentially. Right, just Knight of the Abel Nietzsche attacking past it, thanks to Death Touch. Could see Spawn of Mayhem. Another Thought Seize instead. Takes Valkyrie. Okay. So we're just playing off the top now. But we're getting somewhat close to activating our Speaker of the Heaven, if we can gain a little bit more life here. Need 27 or more. Knight attacks. I'll take it. Just hits us for one. And the Rotting Regisaur, okay. A land not that useful. Keeps that in hand in case of another Thought Seize, I suppose. And then do we just start racing in the air? I can always jump with the speaker if needed. To absorb some damage from Regisaur, so we keep our life total high to maybe still enable Valkyrie. So we'll hit for three. Regisaur attacks. Opponent might be suspicious of a collected company. I think I will chump since the speaker is not getting much better unless we get lucky anyways. And the drill bit can have a look. Alright, another Righteous Valkyrie is exactly what we needed. Up to 21. And then I think we're just racing here. Bones at 7. Potentially facing lethal in the air. If we draw another angel. Both attack. Now I'll take it since we can potentially draw Skyclave to get rid of Conquistador to still present lethal. And I'm less concerned about keeping our life total high. So we fall to 9. 
And a collected company should do it here. Awesome. Ton of triggers on this tank. Jada putting counters everywhere as well. And that should do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Up against Keruga. So maybe, who knows, a Fires of Invention deck. It's been a while. Okay, playing a turn one speaker, I think. Even though I'll have to shock myself to play Bishop and Righteous Valkyrie. Could see a stomp. Which I guess was a reason to just go tap land, turn to Bishop. Opponent can play their Bone Crusher if they want. And then Righteous Valkyrie into Company can hopefully do some good stuff. It's gonna be a Fable instead. Pass it back. If the Shaman attacks, I probably cannot afford to block with Valkyrie. So I may block with Bishop or just take two. Opponent discarding another Bone Crusher, so they can certainly have some burn spells in hand. So I'll have to take two, sadly. Opponent could play Fires of Invention already, which I'm not happy about, but I gotta keep this critical mass of synergy to go with our collected company. Opponent just runs out of Bone Crusher, maybe missing a land. And we're just gonna main phase company here, make sure our opponent cannot interact. And uh, yeah, we hit some reasonable cards. Could have been better. Skyclave can go after Fable. Is that to play, or do we go for Bone Crusher? Maybe I should go for Bone Crusher here. And then we're one life away from growing the team by two. Valkyrie attacks, and now I probably am planning to block the Goblin Shaman. Speaker next turn gains one life with Righteous Valkyrie, which gets us to 27, which is what we need. Could see maybe a burn spell take care of Jada, or just go upstairs to deny the extra life. Takes out Apparition. And the Shaman attacks. So I'll block with Bishop. And another company is great. Can uh, play Speaker first, or we can wait in case we hit another Righteous Valkyrie. Which is probably reasonable. And we hit Bishop. Skyclave. Probably have to take Bishop just so we gain enough life to get up to 27 or more. And then Speaker versus Skyclave. Probably go for Skyclave here. Exile Reflection. And play Speaker. And attack. Opponent jumps. Falls to 8. Possible or opponents an indomitable creativity deck. And that's what they were setting up all along. Gonna be a deafening clarion instead. And a second copy. Okay, that was unexpected. At least we'll get a bunch of uh, spirits here. And a company of the top, so if we can find another righteous Valkyrie, that would be lethal. We cannot. In that case, double youthful, or do we keep a speaker which can start activating? Maybe still prefer double youthful. Alright, opponent concedes without seeing what we hit. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's quite promising. I guess we're missing green mana still, but we should be able to find a green source eventually. Get our tap land out of the way. And then, who can play Jada. Won't be able to play Bishop on two, but... Uh, could maybe play it next turn. Opponent with a fatal push out of a Grixis deck. 
So there's our green mana. Yeah, I'll go with Valkyrie. And then next turn, if we want, we can company. We can maybe copy the Valkyrie first. Croxa making me discard. Yeah, I'll get rid of a bishop. And then we could see Fatal Push finish of Valkyrie since they enable Revolt. Claim to bring back Croxa again. Alright, in that case we'll just play Company and then hope for the best. Another Company, not a bad draw. And I'll main phase so we can gain life and enable a Resplendent Angel, why not? And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little slow, but double apparition for interaction probably makes up for it. Opponent on mono black aggro with a dread wonder. So I'll need some green mana eventually for company. And then for now, looking at double apparition before we start deploying our angels. Opponent also with kind of a slower start. Maybe just holding a lot of spot removal. And a spawn of mayhems worth exiling. Now the token would be a 4-4, even though a spectacle only cost 3 mana. So Apparition dying wouldn't be amazing for us, but it's going to be a Murderous Rider to take care of it. Okay, can double Bishop. So we'll have to take a bit of damage here. But makes it more likely that at least one of them survives. Fatal Push takes care of the first. Yeah, if they can kill the second bishop, we'll be under quite a bit of pressure. Skyclave cannot exile the illusion token, so... Opponent attacks with the team. Don't see a reason not to block. If they had a Fatal Push, they would have just killed bishop to begin with. Aha, uh -huh, Mito Massacre, I guess that's the reason. Okay, so we're at 8. Yeah, it's probably just Resplendent Angel here. Don't love it. But if we draw green mana off the top, we can maybe set up company. Probably hang on to Glass Pool as a spell. Since we're not necessarily... Playing two spells in the same turn anytime soon. Unless I were to draw like an untapped land, I could go Apparition plus Glass Pool Mimic next turn. Is that going to be necessary? Yeah, I could see that being relevant. Sure. Also, we could just activate Resplendent Angel with an untapped land, which is probably better. So that's the main reason. Scrap heap, opponent hits us down to four. Come on, untap land. Okay. Now we face an interesting decision to activate Resplendent Angel or to collect that company, which has the potential of just missing. If I activate, I would gain five up to nine and make a blocker. So that's probably better here. And then, especially with another untapped land, double spelling becomes more appealing. Okay, I guess our opponent concedes. Missing removal for Resplendent Angel, which is going to keep on activating and taking over the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira deck, presumably Control, which is not our favored matchup. Especially without Collected Company, but this is still a keep. 
So can play turn one speaker if we'd like, and I think that's fine. Apply some early pressure, good distraction. So we can save our uh, bigger creatures from removal. Okay, never mind, opponent on elementals. So that changes the equation quite drastically. Can still attack for one. But now we're all in on going double Valkyrie and copy with Glasspool Mimic. Probably still need to play one tapped here. Okay, so we can expect Risen Reef, Omnath to make an appearance here. And maybe a Chandra as well at six mana to wipe the board of non elementals. It's gonna be double Leafkin to start out. And a Florahedron. So our opponent's got a lot of mana. We've got a Righteous Valkyrie for now. We'll attack first. Opponent takes a trade. Which is good, because Florahedron was close to enabling Leafkin Druid to make more mana. So I'm happy with that trade. And yeah, then next turn we could play another Valkyrie or maybe Mimic. If our opponent's tapped out, maybe playing Mimic is safer, because we may not get the chance to copy a Valkyrie later. So then it's better to have the original in hand. Escape to the Wilds. And yeah, there's the Chandra I mentioned, Awakened Inferno, Ashaya, Omnath. So some scary cards, but luckily for us they didn't hit a ton of lands. So they may not be able to play everything out. Soul Guide Lantern, we don't care about. Okay, there's a Collected Company, which I could cast. Or do I just want to copy Righteous Valkyrie, gain 4, activate Speaker? That seems kind of better, in a way. So we can attack with a team. Activate Speaker. And now we're not too afraid of a Chandra. Whereas going for Collected Company has a chance it misses and then we could be in trouble. So we'll see how they can deal with this. The cards in Exile won't necessarily do it unless Omnath goes crazy. But they still have three unknown cards in hand, but those will not be good enough. Awesome, so yeah, it turned out to be Elementals. Fun matchup, but the Angels prevailed. So yeah, overall, good to see quite a bit of our deck in action. The blue splash for Glasspool Mimic, is it good enough? Yeah, I think it's worth it. Could also toss in the uh, blue-white Angel in Vala, which can also protect you against certain sweeper effects if those go up in popularity. So there's a ton of cards you can tinker with, but I've also seen just the green-white Angel versions with other life gain synergies be successful. So whether you splash blue or not, the core of the deck remains mostly the same. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.